Hey Pokemon Masters, my name is Bergy Toby, and hey, thank you for clicking on my video. Welcome to my channel. A channel that was made off the back of my love of the secrets in the world of Pokemon, right? Whether it's Pokemon theories or hidden Easter eggs, secret lore, references, or just things that I think are cool. Which, looking around, it's been a little while since anyone's really done a dedicated Easter egg secret series, and so it's kind of like, I'm like, nah, this is my turn. I want to do a video series like this. With Pokemon Sword and Shield, I kind of did this video about like missable Pokemon, uh, missable Easter eggs, Sinnoh references, and then I thought, you know, let's start that series. And I did uh, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and all the Hoenn games. And now, because I'm doing this in no particular order, I'm going back a generation and doing uh, Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Here are all of the Easter egg secrets, and yeah, things that I think are cool that you wouldn't want to miss. And speaking of never missing a thing, this video is sponsored by the Blink X-T2 motion detecting wireless cameras. Whether for your home or for your office, the Blink X-T2 is actually my personal choice of security camera. In fact, I chose to buy these and use these before my first ever sponsorship, before Blink started working with the channel. I just thought these looked awesome. I've had two now for a few months and I really, really love them. They're wireless, so installation time is minimal. They, it was so easy to get down, I could take it down off my, off my setup for this video just to show it off and it's gonna take me seconds to put it back up. What's also great about these is that they're compatible with Alexa. Hey Alexa, ask Blink to arm my front door. I've asked your home system to arm. And I can arm and disarm them at will like that. So it's great for knowing if the dog is outside like this. Or even talking to the dog by holding down the talk button like this. Hey Rolo, who's a bad boy? It's me. I'm awful. But thank you to Blink for sponsoring me regardless. And as actually as part of this, if you are in Europe, we're actually giving away, as a tea part of the team up with Blink, we're giving away a set of Blink X-T2 cameras. And all you've got to do to enter is just make sure you're living in the EU and let me know what you would use these cameras for. For me personally, again, it's just great to know when the, cat, the cats are outside. So thank you so much to Blink for sponsoring this video, for sponsoring the channel. Do check them out using the link at the top of the description. And of course, leave a comment if you would like the chance to win a pair of Blink X-T2 cameras. Right, let's get on with some Easter eggs. Starting off with number one, one that I think is absolutely wild and I didn't even know about myself until looking up for this video. Did you know, starting in Generation 2 with Pokemon Crystal and it only happened again in Generation 3? In Generation 2, if you leveled up Pokemon in the location where you met it and caught it, it would actually gain extra happiness and extra friendship, which is really cool. I don't know why they didn't keep that. Just a nice little tidbit one, that. Number two, the Sage or Monk trainer class was edited outside of Japan. It was censored to not be holding prayer beads. And this happened both in the original sprite and in the Heart Gold Soul Silver sprite. And this is probably just due to the religious nature of prayer beads. This is actually not totally weird. And number three, they also do it for uh, sexy reasons. This time with the Swimmer or Beauty Sprite. The Beauty Sprite has been edited to have a much longer skirt. The Swimmer Sprites have been, uh, have been edited to, you know, not have a wink as it happens. Interestingly, as I mentioned in my uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield hidden Easter eggs video number two, the Swimmer Trainer class, the one that naughtily winks at you if you're not in, in playing Pokemon in the West. Well, that trainer class is actually on a poster in Spikemouth. I cannot tell if it is the winking one or the non-winking one. Number four, in Pokemon Crystal on the Virtual Console specifically, when you complete the game, there is a Celebi event involving a GS ball. This is not in the original Pokemon Crystal, but it's not plucked out of nowhere. In fact, it is in the, well, there is a similar event in the Japanese version of Pokemon Crystal in an event that required you to link up with your cell phone at the time. Your mobile phone, uh, which uh, back, back in those days, I mean, in Nokia 3210, this, this is what I was on at that time. Actually, that's a lie, I didn't even have a phone at that time. I don't even know what the phones of that generation were, but it's a long time ago, and it was exclusively in Japan. So yeah, I'm glad they made it a bit more accessible. Speaking of hidden events, number five, Hot Gold and Soul Silver are littered with inaccessible events now. Of course, back in the day, if you went to the local, uh, I guess it was your local game store or your GameStop or wherever you could access these events uh, when they were public. And I know there are ways you can access the events now, but there's one, for example, where you would time travel with Celebi 
and you go meet Giovanni chatting with his son Silva and confirming that Giovanni is Silva's father and then you would battle Giovanni, this happening at the same time that you, the player character, are invading Goldenrod Tower to stop Team Rocket. And in fact, there's an even cooler event if you transfer over the Hall of Origin Arceus from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl and Platinum where you watch this really bizarre cutscene that kind of confirms that Pokemon is set in a universe that is self-aware that it is a video game. That's a whole other theory that I've talked about on the channel before. Where you see flashing images of the real world and your Arceus creates an egg with a Dialga, Palkia or Giratina in it at level one. It's uh, pretty wild and those aren't even the only events. Like there's another event where if you got a shiny Suicune, Entei or Raikou from the event to do with the 13th Pokemon movie, the Zoroark and the Master of Illusions movie, and transfer specifically that Raikou, Entei or Suicune to Pokemon Black or White, you would be able to in enter Lost Thorn Forest and catch the Zoroark, but only once. Yeah, Heart Gold Soul Silver really was a really good time to be a Pokemon fan. There was a lot going on. And number six, as part of those very events, there is a Pokemon you cannot transfer up. And I believe it's the first Pokemon that you can't transfer up from a past generation. I mean, okay, you couldn't trade any Pokemon from the original Gold, Silver, Crystal for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. But from that point onwards, everything is transferable up to the modern day games. You can get stuff right back from Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. But in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, there is one Pokemon that you can't. And that is the special event, Notch-Eared Pichu. Only available as, again, part of an event to do with that very same movie, the Notch-Eared Pichu, just, it's, it's abandoned. It's lost in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. And uh, it's very sad, because I really think the Notch-Eared Pichu is uh, quite cute. Number seven, Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver came with an application called the Pokewalker, which is kind of like a sequel to the uh, Game Boy Mini, or the Game Boy Pocket, one of those, and then kind of has later become the Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go Plus. In this little Poke Walker are a whole bunch of levels that you can transfer your Pokemon from Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver to. You can catch new Pokemon here, and there are special event courses that are locked away, including the Nighttime's Edge course, which was only available if you transferred a Jirachi to this. Now, in current day, apart from hacking your games, there is only one legitimate way to now get a Jirachi onto this Poke Walker, and that is if you're in the UK and Europe to use the game Pokemon Channel to get the Jirachi for playing the game and completing it and transferring it up, and then putting it onto this, and you can still unlock the course. There's nothing special on there, just a Jigglypuff and a Clefairy, but it's still pretty interesting. Or if you're elsewhere in the world, I believe there is a Pokemon Colosseum bonus disc that allows you to do this. Number eight, to save space in Pokemon Gold and Silver, the intro screen that features the Sea of Lugia and the Sky of Ho-Oh are the same screen pretty much just flipped. The cloud assets and the wave assets are the exact same thing, just with different color tones to represent day and night. So yeah, that's uh, Neat little fact, can't unsee that now. Number nine, the games Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver are the only games where you can legitimately get two matching Spinder as like a guaranteed thing, other than I guess now like Pokemon Go. In fact, you can get two shiny matching Spinder, which should, you know, technically be mathematically uh, not impossible, but like phenomenally unlikely that it would even happen in our lifetime because there are like 8 billion different forms of Spinder if you include all the shinies. So getting two that are identical is pretty hard, except there's a special glitch in the game called the Cute Charm Glitch, and you can read up and learn all about this. It is a glitch that requires a ton of trial and error and absolutely hours of your time to kind of learn how to get to this point in the game. But from what I can understand, some players will spawn with a secret ID and a player ID that lines up in a way that means when you have a Pokemon at the front of your party that knows Cute Charm, like Jigglypuff, that when a wild Pokemon comes out, it has a like one in 20 chance of being shiny and they all the Pokemon have very similar IVs and EV spreads, which means that Spinder ends up being the same. And also you have a 1 in 20 chance of getting a shiny. It's actually a real method for getting shiny Pokemon and it is something that can be done with a lot of research and a little bit of learning and uh, just working out how much of the exploit you want to do legitimately, which uh, I would recommend uh, any of you hardcore shiny hunters out there 
maybe look into it. 11 in Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal. There is a Team Rocket grunt in Cerulean City who is hiding part of the power plant. It's a, I think a cog from a machine. The power plant part and he, he's hiding it, which is obviously a frustrating thing that you have to deal with before you can continue in your Kanto part of the Johto adventure. Kanto part of the Johto adventure. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, he speaks in a very peculiar way where he's like, uh, I gotta go, go. He's the go, go rocket trainer. And the same rocket grunt reappears in the Unova games all settled down in one of the houses that is only accessible in the winter. Which actually seeing this character settle down and ha having had a kid is about the only thing in the Unova games that leads to any sense of a timeline. Not that the Pokemon timeline isn't already completely frazzled and wild, but it is the only thing that gives a notion between where Generation 2 ends and where Generation 5 games pick up. Somewhere within this guy's lifetime, he is one of the only connecting features. Other than, I guess, the World Championships, although it could be argued that they're holograms, but that is a theory, not an easter egg. Number 12, in Celadon City and Pokemon Crystal only, there is some graffiti on some wall, and you can add a moustache. I don't know why they added this, but they did. Number 13, Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal introduced a bunch of really interesting and unique items, including a silver leaf and a gold leaf, which you could sell for money. And one item of a particular interest is the Berserk Gene. An item found outside of Cerulean Cave that raises the stats of Pokemon, but makes them confused. And I think this is a direct reference to, of course, Mewtwo, which is the cave, you know, Cerulean Cave is where you find Mewtwo. It's the Berserk Gene, and it is a Pokemon with quite aggressive modifications to its original DNA. And in fact, the Berserk Gene is essentially what the Mewtwo is producing uh, in the Detective Pikachu movie, where all the Pokemon get a little bit stronger, but they kind of get all confused. And you know, go Berserk. So I always found that really, really interesting. Number 13, in the beta version of Pokemon Gold and Silver, Lake of Rage was originally the home of the seventh gym. There used to be a town there. And interestingly, Gyarados' Pokedex entries, and in fact, it was kind of in the Alola arc. As late as that, they mentioned that Rampage and Gyarados were once said to destroy a whole town. Now, I don't know if it's part of Pokemon lore or whether that's just a light Pokemon theory of mine, but what if Mahogany Town actually did used to be where the Lake of Rage is? I mean, you can find a house or two that there. And the Lake of Rage is essentially a crater that was said to be filled up by water by rampaging Gyarados. Kind of like the idea that maybe that, that Lake of Rage town used to actually be part of Pokemon lore. But either way, just the fact that that used to be a town is kind of a little hidden secret that uh, you should know. But I kind of like the theory and that's why I mentioned it. And number 14, speaking of beta Pokemon, a Pokemon that we haven't seen appear until much later were actually originally programmed to be in the beta of Pokemon Gold and Silver seen in the Space World demo. This was a very early demo of Gold and Silver that was shown off to people, uh, and I guess it was a, a gaming expo, where we see beta designs for Pokemon that were eventually reused for the likes of Poplio and Tangrowth. And in fact, we saw a whole bunch of gold and silver beta Pokemon. I mean, on the front cover of this magazine, there is a Pokemon that very clearly became the spawning point for what we now know as Teartuga and possibly also Dreadnought. I'll leave a link below to where you find out more about all of these Pokemon. I find it super, super fascinating. And finally, number 20, surfing Pikachu has always been a pretty big theme hidden within the world of Pokemon. Pokemon Yellow had a surfing Pikachu mini game. Uh, in fact, surfing Pikachu is a prize in the Unova games for doing the surfing Mantine challenges. And in fact, Pokemon Crystal has a very special egg called the Odd Egg that has a 1 in 16 chance of being a shiny Pokemon. And all of the baby Pokemon that you can get in this egg, it could be any number of like Smoochum, Tyrogue, Magby, Elekid, or Pichu, all of them know a different special move. Pichu's, of course, is Surf. However, the weird thing about this is all of these special moves that can only be attained through the Odd Egg, even if you're playing Virtual Console, Gold, Silver, and Crystal, if you want to trade them up to Pokemon Bank, you have to delete this move. I don't know why they didn't fix this in the programming or change it, but it is absolutely bizarre to me, and yeah, that's a thing. Also, bonus Easter egg like number 16, uh, Bird Keeper Toby can be found in Johto. So, there you go. It's a nice little one from me. In fact, my little phrase, Saw High Pokemon Masters, comes from Bird Keeper Toby in the game saying, Fly high, my bird Pokemon. Except I wasn't going to tell you to fly high, I just thought that was kind of weird. Wasn't going to choose that as a channel outro. Anyway, if you do want to see more of these videos, I will link to them, of course, below. Of course, also link below is the uh, link to the Blink XT2. Do, of course, check them out. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. If you would like the chance to win a set of uh, Blink XT2 cameras, then, of course, just let us know that you're in Europe and what you'd do with the cameras. And, of course, fly high, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. 
You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. And a massive thank you to those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of the month, the Nerd Therapist and Gunner Clovis. Thank you.